In this video, we're going to take a closer look at this smart lock from WeLock, and I'm going to give you the good, the bad, we're going to walk through installing it, and I'm going to tell you what exactly about this lock makes it smart. So stick around and we'll figure out if this lock can help you automate the boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs, my name is Jeff. In full disclosure, WeLock sent this lock to me in exchange for my thoughts. They're not paying for this video and they had no say in its content. And if I'm being honest, after WeLock sees this video, I seriously doubt they'll send me another lock. Although despite all of its issues, I think this lock would be a nice addition to most homes. Just perhaps not in the way it was intended. The Touch EBL43 is a smart lock. And while I have no issues with smart locks in terms of security, I did have some requirements before I added a smart lock to my home. The major one being that the smart lock needed to have local control. I don't care if the lock has a cloud component as long as I can control it directly locally. Because in terms of security devices, I need to be able to control those devices even if the cloud service or the internet are down. The Touch EBL43 from WeLock is a Bluetooth lock and it can operate completely locally without an app or the internet, which may be the best thing about it. And with the recent updates to the Bluetooth integration in Home Assistant, I was hoping to be able to integrate this Bluetooth lock with Home Assistant completely locally as well. Turns out Home Assistant still has no direct control of this lock over that integration. You can connect this lock to your Amazon Echo and then use that Echo as a bridge between Home Assistant and this lock. But for me, that turned out to be problematic, which we'll get into more later in this video. But as a standalone biometric lock, this one is pretty decent. It's clear that companies are starting to pay more attention to package design, perhaps because they know they'll end up in videos like this. In any case, the WeLock Touch EBL43 will cost you $151. In this box, we get a card about the extended warranty and some instructions on how to install this. Looks pretty straightforward and shouldn't involve any screaming at my door. We of course get the front and the rear handle. It's a very modern design, going for more the shaft look than the more traditional hand fitting knob. I think that might take some getting used to, but in any case, I think it's going to work. This is the Bluetooth model, the Touch EBL43 to be exact, and it is built to be opened by a fingerprint. It feels pretty solid, metal all around, and has the onboard memory for storing 100 fingerprints. We get a rubber gasket that looks interesting compared to the door handle. Not sure why it has two holes in it, given that this lock only has one lock, but it's going to be hidden, so it doesn't matter. And we get the profile cylinder. This one looks the same as every other one I've seen, so nothing new here. There are three RFID cards that can be used to unlock the door if you didn't want to use your fingerprints. And a box of hardware. Looks like screws, strike plate, a screwdriver, and some other bits I'm not sure about. So let's get this thing installed. First step, of course, is to remove the old door handle. I really like these quick set handles. They really made installation easy. And that means removal is super fast. Just need to remove the cylinder with the drill. Now we put in the Wii lock cylinder. Make sure it's facing the right way. I left the screws here a little loose just to make this next part easier. The cylinder can be adjusted if your door hole is weird. Mine worked out of the box. That rubber gasket goes against the door and the outside handle sits in it. It doesn't stick, so you'll need to hold it in place. This install happens in two parts. Instead of trying to get the inside and the outside handles lined up at the same time, use this little bracket and secure the outside piece first. Then the inside handle attaches to that bracket. This would have been easier with two people, or maybe some tape to hold the handle in place while I secured it to the bracket. But I persevered and got it done. Next up, the inside handle. The kit comes with these little pieces for wrapping the toggle lever in the middle. One is longer than the other, in case your door is thicker, I guess. I just used the shorter of the two. Just get it oriented so it lines up with the inside door handle. Then we secure it with a couple of screws. There are multiples of these as well, and I just used the smaller ones. And with that done, it's installed. In terms of installing door locks, this one was pretty simple, and I really like that it's a two-part process. But now it's time that I let you in on a little secret. This was actually the second time I installed this door lock. The original plan had been to install this door lock on my back door. 
but I quickly realized that with the locks auto function, that just wasn't gonna work. And that decision actually saved this video because a lot of that footage I shot of that installation is completely unusable. But it did mean that I had already installed the batteries in the lock when I installed it on the new door. So I didn't need to do that part again, which is why you're going to see a different door in the next clip. This footage is a bit out of focus since I don't have as much light here in this part of the house. The lock is powered by three AA batteries and they're housed in the outside handle. All you have to do is remove a small set screw and then pull the metal housing off the outside handle. You pull down the rubber flap and then slip in your batteries. The outside flap needs a screw to hold it closed when the batteries are in there. Then replace the metal housing and secure it with the set screw. The info with the lock says you should be able to lock and unlock your door 8,000 times on those batteries. So at least one year of life. But once it's powered on, it's time to set up fingerprints. And here's another part where I kind of messed up. I forgot to hit record when I was setting up the initial fingerprints, but setting up that first admin print is pretty simple. You just hold down the wake button for five seconds. It will prompt you to put a finger on the sensor and move it a couple of times which will save your first admin fingerprint. After that, once an admin fingerprint has been saved, you'll be prompted for an admin fingerprint every time you return to this setup option. This lock will allow you to store three admin fingerprints and 97 user fingerprints. And unless you're running a business, I can't fathom that many people having access to my house. And this device stores those fingerprints on the local device for anyone who's worried about their fingerprints going to the cloud and being shared on the dark web. After you've set up at least one admin fingerprint, you can start adding the normal people. Sorry for the shaky footage here. I'm trying to hold the camera and direct the kid. Ah, the glamorous life of a YouTuber. Anyway, to add a user, hold the wake button for five seconds. Give it the finger of an admin. If you need to add another admin, tell that person to now give the lock the finger or press the wake button one more time to get to the muggle option. Then it'll prompt for the print and ask the user to move the finger a couple of times before saving it. From that point, you can have another person set up or just let it time out and return to standard mode. I think it's important to point out that at this point, this lock is completely functional and we've yet to connect it to an app or the internet. So if you're looking for an easy biometric lock option that doesn't have internet access, that's exactly what we have at this point. But WeLock does have an app, of course, and it does make managing this lock much easier. So if you're interested, you can grab that app from your phone's app store. The first time you fire up the app, it prompts you for a phone number or an email address. And the first time I attempted this, I used my phone number. The app claims that it's going to send you a number to verify that that phone number is yours, but I tried this twice and I never got a code. But when I attempted to register with my email address, I got a code right away. I don't know if this is a bug or an incomplete app, but if you're going to use the app, I would just register with your email address and save yourself some time. Once you log into the app, you just click add. And since I didn't have a gateway at this point, I just added the lock directly. To do so, you simply have to scan the barcode on the handle of the lock and then enter a code that's printed on the lock's box, which I assume is part of the process so that someone can't just walk up to your lock and add it to their app and then have control of your lock. But once you've supplied that code, the app connects to the lock and you've got complete control. You can add RFID cards, delete user fingerprints, and even do a factory reset. I said at the beginning, I was hoping to be able to connect this lock to Home Assistant using that Bluetooth integration, but as of yet, that's a no-go. WeLock does have a gateway that is supposed to connect this lock to the Amazon Echo, so I decided I would attempt to use the Amazon Echo as a bridge to get this lock and Home Assistant to communicate. WeLock didn't send the gateway to me, so I decided to purchase it myself, and it didn't take me long to regret that. This gateway is $60, and its sole purpose is to connect this $151 smart lock to your smart home platform. Honestly, they should have just included the gateway with the lock, because it's definitely overpriced at $60. On top of that, getting it connected to the smart lock was just a bad experience. No matter where I put it, it always had a poor connection to the smart lock. I tried 15 feet away, I tried 8 feet, and I tried 3 feet, and the signal strength was the same in every location. Which is probably why every time I tried to use the gateway to unlock the lock, it would tell me that the operation succeeded, but it would never actually unlock my front door. After a few tries, I did eventually get it to work, but it would take a full 20 seconds from when I told it to unlock the front door to when it actually unlocked the door. And because the reliability appears to be an issue, I can't trust that this is going to work when I need it to work. Which leaves me with the question, who exactly is this smart lock for? 
There are some good things about this lock. The build quality is really good and it feels like a premium product in your hands, which I suspect is probably pretty good since you just dropped $151 on a smart lock. The install process is super easy. I think Paul Hibbert could even install this lock without screaming at his door. And like I said, maybe the best thing about this lock is that it can be used completely local without an internet connection or even a connection to an app. Although the app does make it easier for managing fingerprints and adding RFID cards. The biometric scanner appears to be good. I couldn't get it to accept one of my other fingers that I hadn't set up yet. And the biometric scanner means that you can lock up your house and go for a walk without your phone. Does anyone remember when those were pretty much the only way you did walks? Anyway, this lock appears to be pretty fast. From waking it to scanning your fingerprint to unlocking the door appears to take about two to three seconds. Although it might take you longer if you're not real sure how to use a biometric scanner. And you can always use an RFID card in place of a fingerprint for those of you that are worried about storing your fingerprints on this lock. There's also no physical keyhole on this door, which may appease those that have a fear of random lock pickers. I know somebody probably clicked on this video hoping to make a comment about lock picking a smart lock. And I like that the handle is disengaged from the door when the door is locked, meaning it just spins freely until you unlock the door. And the door auto locks after a few seconds, which I think is a really nice feature. You don't ever have to worry about the door being left unlocked, but it's also the reason I moved it from the back door to the front door. Which brings us to what's wrong with this lock. One of the big issues for me is that this lock auto locks, which I just mentioned was a positive, but there doesn't appear to be an easy way to get it to stay unlocked for longer. At least no clearly defined or intuitive way to change the settings. In fact, the only thing in the settings menu are the ability to change the name, transfer the authority, or do a firmware update on this lock. So in high traffic areas, the fingerprint is probably going to slow you down, especially if you're having to constantly unlock the door to go through it. Albeit, probably not as much as if you had to pull out a physical key every time to unlock it. And speaking of keys, there is no physical key, which while that may appease those with the fear of random lock pickers, there is no easy backup method for unlocking the door if your batteries die. The lock does have the option of plugging in one of those portable USB chargers and powering the lock enough so that you can unlock it, or you could just simply replace the batteries since the batteries are stored in the outside handle and the only thing between you and those batteries are a couple of screws. Which, why are the batteries on the outside? Granted, I don't think there's a high probability that someone's going to walk up to my front door and remove the batteries just for the lulls, but that just seems like an unnecessary risk. But after all of that, we finally get to the whole smart lock thing. Which really isn't an issue with the hardware per se, but more so with its description. For $151, I'm not sure what about the Touch EBL43 makes it worthy of the label smart. It's just a lock that uses your finger as the key instead of a chunk of metal. There's no ability in the WeLock app to automate anything about this lock. And without the WeLock gateway, there's no ability to control this lock remotely. Which doesn't make it smart, but it's kind of where we've drawn the line in terms of the bare minimum for smart home tech. If you're looking for a basic biometric lock for your home and you don't want to connect it to the internet or your smart home, the WeLock Touch EBL43 would be a good option for you. It is $151, but it is a pretty good standalone biometric lock, and we're going to continue using it in this house. I'll leave an affiliate link in the description if it's something that interests you. If you're running Home Assistant and you're looking for a local only smart lock to connect to your smart home, this lock isn't the one for you. If the Bluetooth integration in Home Assistant starts working with this lock, maybe that changes. And if it does, I'll be sure to do another video discussing how that changes the situation. And I would absolutely avoid the $60 WeLock gateway. It's way overpriced for what it does. It may make sense if your Amazon Echo or your Google Home is the basis of your smart home. But for $60, all you get is the ability to lock or unlock the door. And frankly, the lock part doesn't even matter because this lock auto locks. So for $60, all you get is the ability to unlock lock this door with a routine or your voice. And in my experience, that isn't all that reliable. Anyway, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. If you're looking for other ideas on local only options in Home Assistant, check out this video I did on connecting my 433 megahertz weather sensors. For everyone else, now it's time to go automate the boring stuff. <music>